Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to this week's edition of the RCB Radio Sports Show, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.ie. Last week uh, we previewed the Clare Senior Football Championship quarterfinals in the Senior and Intermediate and also the relegation fixtures and the Junior A semi-finals. This week it's the turn of the hurling and it's come to the penultimate stages of the hurling senior club championship. We're at quarterfinal stage in the senior, we're at semi-final stage at the intermediate and also the four teams who would be in the relegation round robin from the, in terms of the senior have also been decided. But uh, it's uh, first of all, I'm delighted to be joined by regular uh, RCB hurling analyst uh, Nicholas Ring and well-renowned sports journalist, uh, Clare sports journalist Seamus Hayes. As we preview this week's fixtures, it's Saturday we start off. There's two senior quarterfinals in store, Newmarket versus Wolf Tones and Erog versus Six Mile Bridge. And we're going to start off with Newmarket versus uh, Wolf Tones. And if I can come to you first, Nicholas, uh, at the start of the year, if someone said to you, come Saturday evening, that either Newmarket or Wolf Tones would be in a semi-final uh, in the Clare Senior Hurling Championship, would you look at them fairly sceptical, given the, both sides' uh, performances in the last few years in terms of the Senior Championship? Is this a, a surprise semi-finalist, dare I say? Yeah, I, 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 I would a little bit surprised. It didn't surprise me too much, but... Uh, I suppose the market haven't done a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, they were champions back in 2012, I think, and a lot of this team, the Barretts and Colin Ryan and all, uh, uh, those guys, were were involved back then. Like so, they they have a uh, you know they have a lot a, a lot of hurling done, but they seem you know they did surprise me this year that they came out of their group and 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 uh, it was the, that he's an easy group to go out of, and they and they played very well. Uh, you know, and they've got narrow victories, and nearly every team has got narrow victories this year. Uh, funny enough, but uh, yeah, I, I, they, they seem to have, you know, the the the, the rights of the Barretts and then this and 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 Colin Ryan. They seem to have a new lease of life, you know. And uh, Michael McInerney is there, seems to be there, and never stay. He seems to be there for 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 so for so long, playing really well as well, like and uh, and, and a number of other American players. You know, and uh, they've done really well to get to get where they are. They're in the quarter final. Now one of them is going to be in the semi final. Wolf Tones. I, I I personally wouldn't have, I didn't think they were going that well. I wouldn't have seen them getting into a quarter final. You know, they struggled a bit last year, struggled a bit earlier in the year, but they have worked hard and they find themselves they find themselves in in, in a quarter final and and, and and deservedly so. You know, they came out you 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 come out of your group. It's it's not an easy task when you find yourself in the quarter final. So Wolf Tones are a bit like uh, New Market in that a lot of their players have been there for a while as well, you know, and they have a lot of ground covered and, uh, you know, they're a dual club and, uh, and, and, and and they've done really well and they're, in, and, 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 and they're one game away from a semi-final. And uh, Seamus, on this tie, uh, New Market versus Wolf Tones, the form guide coming into it, would you say that maybe New Market have came out of the more difficult group with their rogue and sort of fecal? Uh, Wolf Tones came out uh, second best in terms of a group that had obviously Six Mile Bridge, which they fell to, but also had Clare Castle and Scarif. So are New Market coming into this on the back of the, the tougher games in terms of the quarter final, or is this very much on the day? And both sides to me look like they were aging for a while. So have they discovered any new, new young talent which has maybe brought them this far this year? Um, well, both sides, uh, you know, they have a lot of players who have been there for uh, the past number of years and who probably would have gained a lot of experience. And I suppose, um, like the comment you made earlier uh, there this evening, I don't think uh, that many would have predicted that they would be uh, involved at this stage of the championship, but uh, you know that said, uh, their neighbouring rivals, there uh, there's a great rivalry there. Uh, I suppose it's not that long ago since uh, no market uh, could pick from the Shannon area before the Shannon Parish, I suppose, came into being back in the sixties or you know up to the end of the sixties. So the, and that adds to the rivalry and a lot of the players in the market probably work in Shannon, so they all know each other very well. Uh, which is adding to the excitement that the game is causing, because there's no doubt about it, 
there's a lot of ex- while most hurling followers uh, would feel that they are the surprise pack has both of them to be where they are there's a lot of excitement about the fixture uh, you know and a lot of people are finding it hard to call who they think will win this one uh, you know and the market probably uh, have the more consistent uh, forum over the past couple of years even though they haven't won any titles but you know they probably have the more consistent forum but if you study the with Tones team closely like you know, they've announced their nominee in Rory Hayes. They've intercounted him in and Aaron Chanaher, uh, Aaron Cunningham. No, he wasn't maybe part of the panel last year. Uh, ben O'Gorman was a very impressive holder up to a year or two ago. He, and he's still relatively young and was out for a while with a lot of injuries. Um, Alan Cunningham is back as part of the management team and he's uh, a renowned uh, coach. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, that's adding to it. And there's a, there's a lot going for them, a lot going for Wood Tones. That, they, you know, they have a couple of uh, members um, with, with a lot, a lot of experience in the likes of Jamie Rowan, Barry Lucknan, you know, Dahi O'Connell. So um, they're not going to be far away, in my opinion. And uh, it's one that no market can't take uh, lightly or can't take for granted. Now, I know they have Colin Ryan, who has been key uh, to their performances over the last number of years. And I suppose we all remember the last time out game, uh, they were looked to be in trouble. Uh, Colin stuck for two goals and uh, in a in a flash and uh, turned the game around and uh, they looked to be in real trouble as I say. And next thing they've topped the group, so uh, it's an intriguing contest. Uh, the whoever wins it uh, will have a lot going for them, and that they won't be fancied to maybe to to win the championship. So uh, from that point of view, um, they they will have a lot going for them. But right now, it's all just bother neither of them is. Is this this Saturday's game because the rivalry is intense, uh, and either will want to lose to the other, and uh, both will feel that they're capable of beating, uh, beating the other one, the, the other side. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I think, you know, I think it has a lot to offer. And I suppose, Seamus, if I can bring you on to the second game now, a rogue uh, versus Six Mile Bridge inside in Cusick Park, and uh, looking at a rogue. Uh, so far in the last few years, the quarterfinal, semi-final, uh, every second year, uh, a good performance, then maybe expect to do better the following year, then back on their sword again. Six Mile Bridge breezed into this start part, part of the competition quarterfinal. Haven't really been tested at all. Do you expect a test to come from a rogue or is this a rogue team now, uh, with, given their both code status and both going well, it will probably... Mileage on the legs, maybe cost them against what will probably be a more fresher six mile bridge outfit. I expect the bridge to get a real test in this one, you know. And uh, I think the, the 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 public view is that uh, this is the opportunity for Aero uh, to topple the champions. Uh, you know, Aero have impressed. Uh, they have a, a core of very very experienced players. Uh, I suppose one of the big talking points going into this game is the state of fitness of a number of key players from both sides. You know, uh, Jamie Shanahan, uh, Paddy Fitzpatrick, um, and Cahal Malone, three players with a world of experience and the county experience as well, uh, you know, uh, are, in, I would say, are doubtful for the bridge. Jamie Jamie Shanahan and Paddy Fitzpatrick missed the game the last time out. Uh, Cahal Shanahan got injured playing football two weeks ago and missed in his diamonds county quarterfinal last week in the football championship. You know, and then there's Aroke have had their share of injuries. You know, Liam Curry has been battling injury all year. Uh, and the big question is, you know, uh, whether or not Shane O'Donnell will be uh, able to participate in this game. He's had a number of injuries this year, but he is a key player for the for the inner side. Uh, you know, but Shane O'Donnell, Kieran Russell, uh, Danny Russell. Danny Russell, uh, I suppose, he's arguably one of the best forwards in the in Holland in the in the in the county. Uh, and you know he's a top scorer for in every day. Every day he goes out. Uh, you know how are the bridge going to cope with him? Uh, in last year's uh, contest where they met, uh, Aero were unlucky. The bridge had to pull out all the stops, and they were battling. Uh, they had to battle hard to, to get over the line. Uh, you know, and people feel that maybe that maybe Aero have, uh, I suppose, uh, gained more experience and become more settled uh, in the past year. They've had an awful lot of work done. Uh, I know what you're saying, and it's a very valid point. They're you know, trying to keep going, both going down the football semi final as well. And there's a half a dozen or so key starters in both teams. 
uh, you know, but uh, I suppose that's life, that's the way the game has gone. There are dual players in, in every club now. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of players uh, playing this weekend who are still involved in football championships at their clubs as well. So from that point of view, they're just, it's how you manage it. And uh, it, it's how managements in the different clubs where they have dual players that deal with those players. But uh, the majority of you would be that this could be the game of the weekend. This is this is the game that most people are looking forward to, and arguably, I think we could have we could see the biggest crowd that we've seen uh, at a championship game in Clare, uh, maybe in two years now that uh, things are opening up a bit again, and that numbers bigger numbers are allowed into games. But it, this is the makings of a really really great game. And I suppose, Nicholas, on uh, Six Mile Bridge in Arrow, whenever they're met, there's always been to be goals in the game. Uh, it's been a high-scoring game. Both sides got goals. And I remember the last time Bridge, Cottle Malone and Brian Corey raided for goals, the crucial sort of period. Is that maybe the the task that lays ahead of Air Rogue, maybe to try and stop Six Mile Bridge uh, scoring goals uh, against them? And do you feel they have tightened up in that sort of area? Because you'd imagine if Six Mile Bridge score goals against this Air Rogue outfit, they'll be very hard to stop. Yeah, for certain. I mean, uh, um, Brian Curry is is a goal poacher for certain. That like, you know, he he certainly take take watching. He's he's probably one of the best club holders probably not to play for the county. You know, he's been very consistent there over the last uh, number of years for Six Mile Bridge, and he's a guy. If he gets that ball, you know, he knows how to get a goal. He knows, you know, he pounces it, and he's and he's able to take his few points as well. So he's one man that's going to certainly take. Uh, He's going to take an awful lot of watching, Nick. And, uh, you know, Shane Gordon's meant to can get forward too. And if he gets a chance, he'd take it as well, Nick. And they, they have a, they, they have options in Six Mile Bridge, uh, uh, you know, they're not just relying. But uh, as Seamus pointed out, the three big names there who are doubtful starters at the weekend. And, and that's a hell of a lot to take out of a team, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's where Colin Malone is, it would be a huge, you know, the, the work rate of him is he's, he's currently. A nominee for the second year in a row for, uh, in a row for, for an all star. You take an all star out of a club team, let's say that leaves a big, a, a huge void, you know, in, in the half forward line or midfield, wherever you might play a nominee mid, uh, wing forward for the bridge. But I, I, I think Aero's biggest problem will, will be Cam and Mori. Aero, a typical uh, David Fitzgerald coach team, they play with a sweeper, and Cam and Mori is a sweeper, and it's very hard to. For a club team to break it down because they have a doubt they had the six point bridge play to, to such perfection. And every time we look, I've, I've seen teams this year launch an attack after attack and came in Mori can read it so well now. And I think that's going to be Aero's biggest problem. They'd probably have to run more at, at, uh, at six point bridge rather than launching the big high ball, which won't work against six point bridge. It just won't. Mori spec they're mopping up and they have big defenders and strong defenders who so will be able to. Uh, you know, and I think that's what what the rock selectors will have to try and figure out is how a way around Warley and 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 break down and if they and if they can break down that sweeper system, which is widely you know if the sweeper system is there for a long time now, a lot of a lot of managers have figured out at inter county how to break it down, but at club level, it it it, it it's a big difference, you know. So th there's where a rock will really you know. Aero came within the whiskers of, of beating Six Mile Bridge in, in the same try last year in Cusick Park. And I thought a few decisions went, went uh, against them, you know, that uh, or another day might have gone might have gone their way. But uh, I, I give Aero a serious chance of winning this game. I mean, they, they, they left Cusick Park very disappointed last year and, and they felt, you know, that they didn't get the, they, they didn't get the, uh, maybe the referee's whistle, whatever you want to call it. And that's something that will, that will drive them on, I think, this year. Like, when they come into the car park there behind Cusick Park uh, at the, this weekend, I expect them to be really revved up and really fired up for this one. They're over a really long time. They have the big names. They have, the, you know, the O'Donnells. They have the, they, 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 they have the Danny Russells. They have the David Reedies. They have, the, hopefully, Liam Curry will be fit. I'm not sure. Uh, Kieran Russell, the great man, the great leader of the field. And, and, and uh, there's other players there who are who do an awful lot of the hard work as well? Like you know, you you'll see you see Shane O'Donnell and you see and 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 uh, they're really getting on the scores. But there's an awful lot of lads there who will work and work and work and work. You've seen them doing it in the football as well. 
and 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 uh, and I think there's where a rogue can 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 win the game. They have the forwards, they have the they have the ability to get goals, and they have the ability to run at six by bridge. And I expect that's what they'll do, because if they go play in an old fashioned launching the ball in, they're, they're, they'll be at nothing. But I think they have well sussed out, and I think it's a game set up for a rogue to win. Um, and um, but then have a look at six by bridge. They're both for three in a row, and you know you don't go for three in a row for nothing. They are a formidable team. I would say the only th- the only thing that that they, that they might be lacking in is a small bit of pace, but they certainly make up for that. And if and if the bridge are hanging in there towards the end, they, they I, we've seen it time and time again where teams have taken the game to six by bridge. The bridge have hung in there, and they know how to win the game. They know how to close out the game. They're very experienced. They're wily heads in them. You know, and 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 and, and uh, you know, it's it's an intriguing battle. It'll be intriguing to see how 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 tactically. You know, I know exactly what Six Wide Bridge are going to do because they do the same thing time after time. Can 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 a rogue uh, counteract that? They certainly have the players for it anyway. You know, and the goals will be the big teams. I'm sure there's going to be a few goals in this game as well. So really looking forward to that uh, to that semi that uh, that quarter final. That's got to be the big game of the weekend, I feel. I suppose uh, we'll jump now on to Sunday's uh, quarterfinals. And Seamus, if I can come to you, the first one, uh, Cratlow versus uh, Aina Kilnamona. And I suppose Aina Kilnamona, their form, they've got here a merit. They've done everything that has been asked of them so far. Uh, very impressive in long spells. Uh, and they maybe sort of die out then for around 10 or minutes before sort of coming in. Cracklow only one sole focus now, and they've had that focus for a while in terms of what lays ahead of them. Um, they probably got that test uh, recently against Ballier, uh, so they're probably they probably that bit sharp, that sharpness over Einek in the morning. How do you see this one going? Um, it's a difficult one to call. Quite honestly, like Einek in the morning. Um, as you say, they're unbeaten in this season championship. They got a fair battle the last time from Whitecat that a lot of people wouldn't have predicted. Uh, but you know, they responded well when it looked like the game might be about to slip from them. Um, they have been going well, uh, despite the fact that they have had to make a couple of changes in defence because of people being out through injury. Uh, they have uh, a big plus in Aidan McCarthy, who's having a great season. Uh, you know, we all saw what he was capable of in the county front. Uh, he's the scorer in chief, running up big scores from play and from freeze. Uh, and then, you know, the arrival of a couple of young fellas has made a big difference to Heineck in the morning. You know, Conor Hagerty, uh, you know, is there. He's he's uh, causing a lot of problems for opponents, uh, you know, and then they have the Guilers. And um, they, they have these fellas, you know, who have come into the panel and who are making a difference. David Fitzgerald has been on fire in the club championship for for Ina Kilimona this year. Playing at left halfback, he's scored, scored a couple of great long range points in every game uh, and scored them when they were needed. You know, Kevin Herr, uh, I'd say they don't say whether they have their mind made up as where his best position is or where to play him. Uh, it's, it's difficult to see. He started the season in the forward line. He was full back last day out. Uh, you know, I know Sean Mahoney is out injured, and I think Keith White has, has a few injury problems. You know, who'd be options. Um, Pat Kelly in goal, very experienced. Not Ireland middle winner with Clare from 2013. Uh, so, you know, they, 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 they have a, a good mix. Uh, the big question is, they, you know, what Cratler team will turn up, I suppose. You know, they have been inconsistent over the last couple of years. There's no doubting the experience they have. There's no doubting the talent they have. Uh, they, they have been around for a while. Whether that is... Um, proving a problem or not, or whether they're finding it difficult to maintain the hunger, if you like, I suppose. But, you know, the, the, on his day, there's the better holder and player than Conor McGrath. You know, he, he's a class act. Uh, everything seems to revolve around him. He creates openings. That if the lads around him uh, are, are tuned into, <laughs> tuned into Con- to Conor, uh, then you're in a strong position. You know, last day out, they were without a couple of players. Cahill McInerney was missing last day out. Whether or not he'll be back this week, uh, we don't know yet, but uh, he's their captain. He's a key player. Uh, in the boys, Mr. Lester Joe Tindry, uh, dear Ryan, teammate of Aidan McCarthy's in the county setup, uh, is a talented player. 
you know, then of Podge and Sean Collins. Uh, there's no doubt like they, they, they have talent and they have buckets of it. Uh, Cratchit at their best will be very, very hard to stop. Uh, they haven't produced their best yet this year. That's the worry, and I said that's the worry that our management have, uh, just to get them into full flow. And if they're in full flow, well, then they'll be hard to stop. At this stage, you'd have to give a hesitant nod to Aina Kilnamona because they're unbeaten, uh, in fairness, and they have been moving along nice and quietly. Uh, you know, they were underdogs in a couple of the group games, and uh, that didn't worry them, and they came through. So. Um, it could, it could be it could be a great occasion. It could be the, 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 at this stage of the season for the last couple of years, the championship in Clare has really come alive and there have been some great games. And I think this is another possible um, top top drawer fixture uh, on Sunday, the early part of the day. And I suppose, Nicholas, I know this is your own sort of club, but Aina Kilimona have been trying to make that breakthrough to those latter stages, maybe to get to a county final as such. But in terms of, I know Aina have some very experienced players, some very talented, experienced uh, players that have played an awful lot of big days. But uh, dare I say, nothing beats uh, the experience of playing in county finals, whether you win them or lose them. And Cratlow have been there several times in, in the past decade or so. Uh, is that sort of experience that Aina Kilimona need to get fairly soon to, to, to make that sort of next step to the next grade? And I suppose, is that the really worry that Cratlow maybe have that sort of, that if it comes to a real tight battle going down the closing stretch, that Cracklow can delve into that experience that probably Aina Kilimona still just haven't had at, at this stage yet. Yeah, that's 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 true, Jim. I mean, uh, famous names about there, the Cracklow players. Like, I mean, they're who's who, their household names. Almost not just in Clare, but beyond. And uh, you know, great, great, great players. And we've had great days out cheering, cheering them on at all levels in in, in Clare and and. Um, and they have they have, they have a vast amount of experience, and but they have also I suppose the contract that they have played in the you know they were in a in the Munster football final not too long ago. They have played a lot of football. They played a lot of hurling. They have a huge mileage, and Conor McGrath has been in an ever stay except for a, 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 a brief t- a time that he's in, he got he had a bad shoulder injury, but he's been there right through with that. Uh, Conor McGrath beat us in the semi final. I, I can't remember exactly, but it seems to be a hell of a long time ago. Uh, Ida Kinnamora were ahead and Conor McGrath, a young Conor McGrath at the time, got a ball out around wing forward and made his way through and, and uh, the, the rest is history as I say. So that's, I think that was the last time we were actually in the semi-final we, we were able to get to quarter-finals can, can we take the next step and uh, I, I, I think we can, I think we're ready I think I think there's, there's a great uh, we, we know the experience of Cracklow but this Ida Kinnamora team has has gained an experience as well, and remember that the, the majority of these players have an uh, have a county under twenty one medal as well, like uh, in, in 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 their pocket. And uh, you know, Pat Kelly is no more experienced in Clare. I think probably the best goalkeeper in Clare playing at the moment. Uh, uh, you know, along with a couple of more, but Pat Kelly is up there the way he's the way he's been playing. His puck outs are 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 will give you the advantage every time. He's able to ping that ball. He's able to to pick out whoever he wants. He, you know, that's been, always been his strong point and he's a great shot, shot, uh, shot stopper as well. So when you have somebody of that caliber uh, in, in the goals, it's always, uh, you know, a great starting place. Unfortunately, Sean Mahoney got, got injured early, early in the year and uh, with the, the sort of, uh, uh, Keith White stepped into the breach and Keith White is very experienced. Uh, he's an uh, inter-county experience and underage and Keith uh, White was having an excellent year, and no Keith has got injured. So that's a that's a big problem. Kevin Kevin Herr filled the, the void there against Whitegate and did very well. And Kevin is a very experienced player as well. So if, if I, I I'm not sure whether Kevin will be there or not, but uh, I I have no fear of Kevin is there. But uh, when you have injuries like that, and and I'm sure Cattle have their problems as well when it comes to injury. But uh, I, I think it's time now that Ida Kilnamona delivered on their promise. They have the McCarthy brothers, they have David Fitzgerald, they have Connor Hagerty, they have David Meskin, you know, they, they, they have uh, Kyler who, who comes on as a sub, he's kind of played as a sub now, who can come on and get, and get scores, you know, they, they, and they have 
they, they have other players there as well, like you know, Johnny Coote is probably the most senior of those players. Like he's having, having a, 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 an excellent year as well. And um I I I think you know there's a big question asked no, can you get beyond the court finally? And I think the management have done an excellent job and I, and, and I compliment them on winning every game fair to what the Whitegate game, which they didn't have to win, and that was a hard fought draw and probably ideal preparation coming in against uh, against uh, a talented a talented uh, uh, team at, at, you know, um, at, 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 at the weekend. And uh, I, I, I think, you know, the, the question is, you know, we all know what Cratlow can do. Everybody knows what Cratlow can do. The, the, the question mark about Cratlow in the last number of years have their delays when it comes to the down to the, you know, the, you're getting into the, the reading, you're going to be meeting strong teams now. Uh, and, you know, the, and it, the mileage is on the clock and, and all that, but the experience is there. And I, I saw Colin McGrath, he's an amazing man. I saw him uh, two games out, I think, and he ran the whole show on his own. And I, I can't remember exactly who they were playing, but I remember being memorized watching him. He covered the whole pitch. And this is the man we're thinking is tiring. Like, and he covered the whole pitch. And at the end of that game, it was 10 minutes to go, but he just he just uh, seemed to have a new lease lease of life. So so maybe we're 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 uh, a bit premature and saying that they you know talking about the mileage parts of it like but I think it's a game for, for Ainley Kildamona to win and it's a game from Sport and put down the mark and say, you know, we've won our games, we, we are confident and we, we, you know we have pedigree and, and, and we want to we want to get into semi final. You know, I think the hunger will be there and and I no doubt it will be and as I said I think everything is, is set up for them really but it's got to be a tough nut to crack. Uh, Cretlow, uh, you know, Cretlow are one of the top teams in the last at least ten years, and probably more. They're they're one. They're the top. They're a top four team, probably a top three team in in that league time in football as well. So they have great character, and uh, you know they have a good management there as well. Uh, and uh, it should be a cracking game, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I hope Seamus can keep me kind of calm there, and maybe you'll be there yourself, Jim, keep me calm in the sense. But uh, it's a, it's a, it's one I'm really I, I'm really looking forward to. The question is going to be asked. It's up to who can answer it. Nicholas, uh, I'll I'll stay with you for uh, for the moment. Uh, I'll just come on to the the next game uh, here just for a, a second, and uh, we're moving on to Ballye versus uh, Kilmele Sunday. And the one thing that struck me when I was thinking about this game there today about Ballye and Kilmele was the the physique and the height difference. That is uh, evident in this game. I was just looking at Ballier. You have probably James Murphy over six foot. You have Gary Brennan over six foot. Niall DC over six foot. The new addition, Cahill O'Connor uh, over six foot. Again, Angus Keane practically over six foot. Brandon O'Connell practically over six foot. And you put that against the Kilmele side that are light, wristy, small, sort of skillful hurlers. This time of year, I'm just looking at this and I'm just saying, the physique and the, the size difference uh, between uh, Bellier and uh, Kilmele alone, there seems to be a big sort of size element in terms of uh, in terms of the, the players, in terms of physique, let alone. How important is that going to be? Oh, well, I, I, it, it is very important. I mean, um, a lot of people will argue the skin will, 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 will make up for size, but I mean, uh, a big handy fella is better than a small handy fella. My book any day this week, anyway. But, um, you know, that's been that's been part of any year's game. They're really a powerful team. And that's just been, that's what brought them to an all Ireland final not too long ago when Fergal Hagerty was over them, you know, and coaching them. And and, and um, that's, that's they have the same management team, Fergal is much of no that good to say, manager is back. He's uh, their, their power. And, if you look at the teams who have won the Pearsick, uh, Kula, all those teams, the one thing that they have is, is that they have been powerful teams, as in strength-wise. And of course, they have you have to have the hurling. So, but but uh, definitely, it's a huge advantage. The big men you, na- you named there, all over six foot, all very big. And even there, probably Jack Brown, is, and he's no snooch. He's probably not the tallest man in the field, but by God, he has all the iron, the iron work to go to go. To go with it, if you know what I mean. But uh, I suppose the big question mark over this game is what two teams are about to start, because rumor has it Tony Kelly may or may not start. We know he has an injury. Uh, it was mentioned today that he probably will start if if he's needed, uh, and um, you know play 
play through the pain, pain barrier. Jack Brown has a has a, has an injury as well, and and is a slow healer as well. And uh, and um, you know, if, if either of those or both of those are out, they'll be a huge blow to Belie. Uh, Belie without Tony Kelly, they've managed it the last day, you know, and they did and they did really well without him. But Tony Kelly is worth six, eight, ten pints every game he was out. Because there's one thing about Tony Kelly, he's probably one of the most honest hurlers in the country in that he delivers and gives it. It doesn't matter whether it's a Clare Cup game, a Clare Championship game, or he's playing for his county, he give you hundred percent every time. And uh, and the same and the same can be said of Jack Brown. And then Mikey O'Malley is 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 out. I'm pretty certain of that unfortunately he broke his thumb. And Mikey O'Malley is would be a huge blow to Kilmealy because Mikey can come up with, with a pints and play. He's an excellent free taker. He's a driven guy as well and, and, and he loves driving the fellas and, 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 and getting his team going. And uh, and and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that um, Takeem Maloney is, is is struggling with injury as well. Somebody said that he has a broken finger. finger. I, I can, I, I'm not certain on that, but uh, he's their other free taker and, and he'd be a huge blow. So the two... Maybe the two counter like each other, two from both sides missing, two, uh, four very important players. So they, that, that'll be uh, that'll be a huge loss. We'd, we'd have to wait and see what teams line out. But uh, they're not just a two men team, either team either, like, you know, and uh, can barely have the likes of Mikey O'Neill, uh, Derek Keane, like, it, it can win a game on his own. And, and uh, they um, Mike O'Neill isn't that tall in statue, but he covers an off that ground, fierce determination, great skill, great to get a couple of pints when needed. Connor Cleary is as big as any man on the field, let's say probably one of the tallest men in the field, a powerhouse at centre back. And he's really he's really key. And I know it is about Connor now. He he's starting to come up the field a bit as well and take the odd score as well, which is an added bonus for uh, you know for for, for Kim Bailey. And I mean the spirit and heart of Connor, like you say, you know, is what Kilmeady are about. I, I, I noticed that Kilmeady from the first round, they seemed a bit flat in the in, in their early early two round two games, or they think certainly their first their first game, but they had really come out of their shell now and and, and uh, you know they have Connor Connor uh, Clancy there on the on, on, on the sideline their, their their manager and and um, you know a guy a guy like him on the sideline. Will drive any, any any team on, and and Colin Lynch as a coach. I mean, you can imagine what Colin Lynch would do for for any team. He let them happen off the off the off the off the, off the wall go out. But uh, it, it's 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 going it's going to be a tight affair. Obviously, Betty are going to be favourites for this one. But it's it's all much a local derby, I suppose. They're not too far apart. You know, they're just across the the Lissy Casey Road. I suppose is all that really divides divides the two parishes and uh, and uh, the Kilgore Road and. Um, it, but there's a lot of it. There'd be a lot of bite in it, and uh, you know, I I think the experience of any, you know, you would you would be thinking would be enough to see them through. But I saw I saw a great fight in 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 the uh, against Lanera. There was a great fight in the Kilmeady team, and if they can get a a run in Belie, and you know, to counteract the big men in Belie, you will have a, a lot of runners and and and. Uh, you know, Sean O'Loughlin, the man who's playing probably the best hurling of his of his of his of his career this this year, he scored I think he scored four or five points against Tanner the last day. And his brother Brian is inside in goals. I mentioned Pat Kelly has been a great goalkeeper. Brian O'Loughlin has never stayed there. Very experienced player as well in in, in the goals for Kim Bailey. So it's 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 what it's it's another part of the final that we really I'm really looking forward to. You know, we know all the guys. You know, seeing them all in together there and cues it back and see what they can, can do. But it, it's just a pity that Mikey, Mikey O'Neill and company won't be there. Uh, and not Mikey O'Neill, Mikey O'Malley, I mean to say. I, I, it's a real pity for him. It's a real pity if Kim Malone is out and, and, and Jack Brown and Tony Kelly would be. You know, it would rob us. I, people make their way to Cusick Park just to see the, those guys on their own. They're so good. You know, that's why we, we go to Cusick Park. So hopefully that... They, 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 uh, you know, I know there's a few of them out, but hope I think I think we're still going to see a great game, and I think it'll be close, just about I give it to to Bellier on their experience. Uh, Seamus, you know uh, Colin Lynch all too well. Uh, uh, a sort of Lissy Casey, great uh, 
uh, Kilmealy great as well. Uh, you sort of the Kilmealy sort of backroom team up there with Connor Clancy as well, renowned experience. Uh, how do they approach this task? Um, how do Kilmealy sort of approach the uh, Ballet game? I suppose they won't want to bring it into a physical battle and bring it into a, a contest with a scrap uh, with Ballet because probably they're outmatched physically. Is it really up there to keep it wide, keep it fast, keep the ball and play at a high intensity and try and run the legs off of Ballet? Seamus, uh, you'll just have to unmute there, Seamus. Uh, yeah, start again. They, they both uh, know what it takes to win games. Uh, they won't be looking at this as playing Bellier. They'll be looking at this as a championship quarterfinal uh, and they won't have any name in the opposition, just to know they're playing uh, a difficult team, a team with a lot of talent. Um, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of... Uh, Worrying can made it this week because there's a lot of doubt about a number of players. Uh, you know, Mikey O'Malley and Key Maloney, as Nicholas mentioned, are both out. Um, ruled out Aidan McGuan, uh, is a major, major doubt and unlikely to play. He missed the football game with Milton last Sunday with an injury. Tommy Barry, who has arguably been, if you were picking a team in the championship so far, uh, he would certainly be in the run to be, to be wing or cornerback. He was outstanding for Ken Maley all season. Uh, he's struggling to shake off a, a leg injury. Uh, you know, they, they have four or five uh, major, major doubts, you know, and uh, they mightn't be as well known as as Tony Kelly and Jack Brown are, we'll say, on, on, on the Bellier side. So uh, I think the outcome of this game may be determined by who's playing or who's missing uh, more than uh, if you have two full teams, you know, because the loss of these players, it will be hard to replace them. I know they both have good panels and strong panels, but uh, to lose key players uh, uh, at, a champ at a championship time is obviously a massive, massive blow. And hamstring injuries are notorious. They take a minimum of a month and sometimes they could take two or three months. You know, we've seen already this year a couple of bright uh, young, bright players in the county, who, like Jamie Malone being a case in point, got injured at the very start of the season playing for Clare. Uh, first game back was last Sunday. He got home for the last quarter of an hour of with Corrifin and Intermediate Football, uh, have missed the entire season for what at the time was predicted to be a six-week injury. You know, so nobody really knows how long these things take and you have to, uh, I suppose, they have to be guided by the medical people and by the experts to, just to make sure that everything is right. So, But a lot will depend. Uh, you know, Aidan McGuan uh, and Tommy Barry have been key in the making Mary defence. Keen Maloney and Mikey O'Malley have been two key forwards. If the four of those are out, as it appears likely at this time, at this point in time, um, you know, that's a third, that's a quarter of your team that you have to replace straight away, which, you know, for any club uh, is a huge, huge ask. Um, you could argue that Tony Kelly uh, is half the belly team on his own. Now, with all due respect to everybody else, uh, and if he's out, it's a massive, massive blow, not to mention where Jack, Brown, Jack Brown's lost. So a lot depends on, on those people. Uh, whether they're able to play or not. Uh, but I think that that spurs on the other guys in the team, you know, to spur them on to say, look, we have a part to play here. We have been playing our part, you know, we row in well with these lads. And if they're missing, it's up to us now to lift the, to, 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 to lift our game a bit. You know, we saw can maybe our belly do that the last day without the two lads. Uh, I know you could argue that they were still in the championship irrespective of the outcome, but they showed that they didn't want to lose that game and they battled and battled and got, the, got a result out of it. So the same thing will happen on Sunday. There's no doubt that um, both sides want to win this game and both sides will go at it hammer and tongs. Uh, you know, uh, both sets, both managements have put in a massive effort. Robbie Hogan, manager of Bellier, has been there before, led them to the All Ireland final that Nicholas referred to there a few years ago, took a break and came back this year. So he knows the scene and that he has his selectors of a couple of years ago back with him this year. They know what's involved and what it requires. So that experience is, uh, is going to stand to them. Uh, you know, you're not going to, you'll, you'll get very few more experienced fellas than uh, Lynch and Clancy. And they have Martin Meehan, star with Clare in the 70s and, and into the 80s, you know, as, as, you know, in their background team as well. So they know what it's all about. Uh, this is going to be, <laughs> I know I've said it about one or two of the other games, but this is going to be an intriguing battle. 
uh, you know, and uh, uh, I find this one very hard to call. I think it's a 50-50 game right now. You know, if any of the doubtful injured players have fully recovered by the weekend and gets to play, it may swing the game in that team's favour. But, uh, you know, right now, it's a toss of a kind in my book. We'll move on now to the intermediate uh, semi-finals. And if I can start off with you, uh, Nicholas, uh, first, uh, an all East Clare affair, Tulla versus Six Mile Bridge. Tulla came through a much fancied Six Mile Bridge uh, second, Tulla versus Mid O'Brien's actually. Tulla came through a much fancied Six Mile Bridge uh, second string. And uh, Mid O'Brien's uh, won a tough battle uh, against uh, Tubber, I do believe. So uh, Tulla versus Mid O'Brien's, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a, it's a, my first thought is it, it, it's going to be very hard to call that one. Uh, Tulla, Tulla, I thought, you know, I, I, I thought Six Mile Bridge would beat them, to be quite honest. And, and, you know, they came out and had a great win. And they've come through this, you know, Tulla, Tulla are a great club, like, and they're a big club. And and I think Tulla, you know, Tulla are, are, are a senior club, really, but, but they find themselves down. You know, played intermediate now, and uh, I think they'll be uh, they'll be really trying hard to to try and get back into the to try and get into the final, obviously. But Smith O'Brien's are a team who've been around there for a while now, and 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 uh, they're they're a tough team, tough team, East Clare team, uh, and and uh, I I think it's 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 very hard to call it, to be to be quite honest, no more than any of the other games that we covered this evening, but. Um, you know, I, I, I think any team that, the team that beat six by bridge should have really but uh Smith and Ryan's beat Tubber and Tubber would have been fancy, you know, they were in the they're been in finals over the last few years and uh albeit now they're without Pat they were without Pat O'Connor who was a huge loss to them, obviously, you know, and uh but Smith and Ryan's overcame them and you know Tubber are a hard to are a hard look to, to crack and Smith O'Brien's beat them. So, you know, Smith and Ryan's have probably like, slightly fancied. All year, I think at the beginning of the year that were spoken of as being a team that, that, could, that could get to the final and, and, and possibly win it as well. And they're, they're, within the, they're within shooting distance of it now. It's a very hard one to call, Jim, to be quite honest. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I, I expect a very close game, a very tough battle. And, uh, I, I, you know, Tulla are, are a team that slug it out all day, like, you know, whereas we took and Spitzer Ryan's are team tough. You know, and uh, they're a lively team. You know, and kind of, you know, maybe, maybe Spitzer Brains can, can can pull this one out. Uh, Seamus, your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I agree with Nicholas. I think it's going to be very, very close. Uh, you know, I suppose Tuller were seen up to a couple of years ago and uh, were lost or seen of status. Smith Brains have been knocking on the door for the past number of years. Uh, you know, and have been very, very close. <laughs> You know, they, they were part of a minor amalgamation with Broadford there, which won a championship a few years ago. And, you know, there's players coming through from that. And um, they have a kind of a settled team that they've had for a while. You know, a couple of the Stritch brothers are there. Uh, the O'Shea's, Michal Ryan, uh, Mike Goff, who uh, was a very talented player. Um, Keen Maloney, who has spent some time with the Clare panel. Uh, Clare senior panel. So, you know, they have... To have a, a, a good, um, solid uh, base. Um, now they they met in the first round of the championship. These two teams, and there was only a pocket of ball or two between them. Um, this is the one to win. Though. You know, you know, uh, winning the first round of the championship didn't uh, win or lose and didn't knock out anybody. So this is the one to win. Uh, to have a good mix as well. You know, to have uh, obviously David McInerney, Dara Curry was part of their senior panel a couple of years ago. He suffered a serious leg injury. He's back to full fitness, captain in the team this year. Uh, you know, going well. Dan Vaughan, the goalie, has played on the race level for Clare. Uh, so, you know, and if Sean Torpy is a survivor from the last championship winning team, you know, of 2008, wasn't it? Um, or it was 2007. Uh, and uh, they have that mix, and they will be hard to beat. And Jim McInerney managed them to the senior title back then. He's back managing the team this year, uh, you know. Uh, he's an experienced man. He has been through it all. Knows what it takes, uh, and seems to have a good team around him. Um, I think Smith O'Brien's have been that little bit more impressive so far in the campaign, and I suppose as the, because of that, there's a slight fancy for them. 
Um, now, whether they can do it in the big day or not, they've tended to not produce their best hurling, which was most needed in recent times. So that's something they have to get over. Uh, and I have a feeling that Smith O'Brien's will edge this one. And uh, Seamus, if I can stay with you, the second uh, intermediate semi-final, Rouen versus uh, Dor Bearfield. Rouen probably caused a big shock uh, taking out their near neighbour uh, and near neighbours, uh, Cora Finn, while Bearfield uh, did what was expected of them to do when came through against uh, Bodaika. Bearfield have been knocking on that door as well in terms of making uh, the jump uh, to senior status. Is this a, a, a step up again for Rouen uh, in terms of, obviously they get confidence of beating Cora Finn, but is this another step up the ladder again in terms of who they're meeting in the semi-final stage in Door Bearfield? I suppose from the point of view, if you look at uh, Rouen's, uh, I suppose, results over the last six or seven years, where they have struggled and at times, I would say they have been uh, heading downwards and looked like that they might lose their status, but you know, uh, they have kept plugging away, but they, 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 they have a lot of very, very good hurling people involved. Like Niall O'Connor has played for Rowan all his life and he's taken over as manager this year. And uh, they have one of the best coaches in the game of hurling. And I say that without any uh, doubt in the world about it. Sir Lines uh, must, is one of the most shrewdest individuals around. Uh, great coach. And uh, you know would co- would manage and coach any team into county or otherwise in, in in the country, and he's involved there this year. Uh, they've they've been boosted by one or two young players who have come into the squad, like who have come of age, and you know, a couple of fellas who came through the Rouen Corrifin minor amalgamation that won a minor championship a couple of years ago. And another big plus is Killian Ryan, after four or five years away working overseas, uh, is back and in the side this year and is holding really well. Uh, and has been a huge asset to them since his return. So, from that point of view, Rowan have improved uh, hugely. And, you know, they're there on merit, as you rightly say. Uh, they've had a couple of great results. Uh, and, you know, they they won't fear St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's forum, I suppose, and this is, a, this is a, something that Mike Gilfell as manager and Shane Downing, the, the coach with him, has to get over. They've been inconsistent. Uh, you know, on their day, uh, they'll... Then they, they, they'll run up big scores and they'll cause awful problems for any opponent. But they're not doing that on a consistent level. And like a couple of weeks ago, there were odds on favourites to top the group and beat Corafin. Corafin needed to win uh, to stay in the championship, and Corafin did win. Uh, you know, and that rattled St. Joseph's a bit, and I suppose it asked a number of questions of St. Joseph's in relation to the way uh, to, to their team. Now they have. They can focus solely on the holding now because they were in the football senior championship up to last weekend uh, and bowed out. But uh, they have seven or eight straight dual players who are starters on both teams. Um, yeah, on paper, they would look to have the ammunition to win this and get to the final. Uh, and I class them as favourites for the game. But uh, I do not for a minute rule out Rowan of making things very difficult for them. Uh, Nicholas, your thoughts on this encounter? Yeah, I'm going on with most of what with all of what Seamus said, really. Like, you know, um, Rowan went up and they played they, they, in their last game, they played for a fin in a game that they, they weren't really expected to win, but they produced, uh, they produced the goods and, and, you know, a local derby and they really showed heart and determination to overcome, you know, a very good core of would who would, uh, as Seamus uh, pointed out, already beat St. Joseph's. So, no sooner have they beaten Corafin up the road, they go over a bridge and you're into Corafin. But you come down the road and you go over the bridge at Trumcador and you're in Bearfield. And Aidan Lynch is the first house in, in Rouen. If you go from Bearfield to Rouen, Aidan Lynch is the first house you'll meet once you cross that bridge. And Aidan Lynch is the man I think who would have a big say on where and who gets to the county final because he's a huge top player. He's, he's a He's just he tough, he's strong, and he knows how to get goals and points, and he's a great free taker as well. But uh, to a Bearfield are not without their big names either. And the club who I said it about 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 Tuna, uh, you know, uh, to a Bearfield are a huge club, like a huge parish. It's not that long ago they had they, they were winning on having titles actually going back a decade or whatever it is now, maybe before. But uh, they're itching to get back up. Get back up there, and they're trying everything. They're trying hard. 
But uh, for me, I think the favourites are St. Joseph's. If, if, as you know, as James alluded to, if they bring their forum, you know, and, and, uh, uh, um, but two neighbouring parishes, you know, a, t- a team, a, a, a team like Rouen, you know, the upset they caused against, it, was, it wasn't an out note to uh, upset against Corfin, but it was, it was a hard fought game. And, and, and if Rouen can bring that kind of a game and make it that kind of a game, a hard slug, uh, slug fist, then I would give Rouen a huge chance. You know, obviously, we are our, our favourites, but I, I, I think this is one that will go right down to the wire. It'll go down to, the, to who really wants it more. You know, I, I suppose, if you're a Berfield, how do you react after being knocked out of the championship in football? You know, uh, a Corofin, a Corofin uh, uh, in the opposite, they were knocked out of the hurling, but they bounce back really well. In, 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 in the football. So can can can, can Joseph do the apps? No. They've gone over the football only a week ago. Can they can they bounce back though and say, you know, our year is not finished yet? But uh, I think it's going to be, you know, a battle of two neighbouring parishes. There's just a river dividing them uh, and, uh, and 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 the the, the belly he cut away is along there it's uh, and, and that's just dividing the two parishes down into belly mainly there. So they know each other really well. They probably not went to school together. And and uh, you know this, the, it's a real a, a, a real a real um, neighbourly na- na- you know na- the neighbourly battle we'll say and the local derby. So anything can happen in one of those games. But I expect a very good game, and uh, I, I, it could it could you know it, it, it I think it'll go down to the wire as well. And the wire have surprised me, which uh, maybe I shouldn't have been so surprised, you know, to, and they find themselves in the semi final and they've done really well. And, and they've really fought hard to get there. And uh, you know, Seamus said the guys that are over them, like I mean, who who do you want in the dugout to put, to put, to put those two in? You know, and uh, Sir Lines is is has done it all. I think no dual barefield so well, and he'll know how to counteract him as well. So I expect to be battle and I expect a close a close encounter. Um, before we close up tonight's show uh, for this evening, Seamus, I can just run by you for the last maybe 90 seconds. Can you just explain the format there in the in the terms of the senior uh, relegation? I believe no team of the four teams, Corsheen, Clooney, Quinn, O'Canhill's, Mids and Clare Castle, none of it, it's not like the football format where two teams will meet and they get relegated. It's a different format, so I do believe no team in the senior hurling will get relegated this weekend. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and, and the night that the Masters fixtures plan was adopted back earlier in the season, um, White had proposed that uh, when it come to relegation, that uh, that it be run on a round robin basis, that the bottom team in each group uh, would play each other, uh, and that was accepted for second, and it was accepted. And there was no objection on the night. And what surprised me was that nobody proposed a similar format for the other uh, championships. You know, the, uh, but it didn't happen anywhere. So this is the only one. So uh, it's a new competition. The four teams are under one group. They all play each other. And at the end of that campaign, two will go down. But this is that it's quite possible. And indeed, I would suggest likely that at least one, if not the two teams, will be relegated on score difference. Because, uh, you know, they're all capable of beating each other, uh, in my opinion. Uh, this weekend's games, you have Crusheen uh, play, playing O'Callaghan's Mills and you have Clark Castle playing Clooney Quinn. Now, I suppose the two winners, most people would feel of those two games, would have a slight edge going into round two. But in round two, it could be the other way around and they could all finish up with one win each after two rounds and then to be held for leather in the final round. You know, and there could be draws in it. Um, there's going to be a lot at stake. Uh, there's definitely going to be a lot at stake. So... To, to and, uh, just Seamus, one last thing there. So you're saying there's going to be an extra three games involved in this. So uh, we're yeah. now in the middle of October. Is there a chance this relegation could drag on until up until as far as the county final in, in terms of hurling? Given that, or is it going to be played out week, week, week after oh, week after that's, week? That's what it looks like. That's, that's what it looks like right now. That will be a, it's, it, it looks as if there's going to be holding weekends. Uh, that these games will be played. There's still a football involvement. Uh, you know, Christine have two players in, involved in the intermediate qualifying intermediate football team who are still in the championship. So obviously, 
that that'll be an issue after both. If if you were to try and play both the same weekend, uh, it would be an issue for some one of the teams anyhow involved. So from that point of view, um, it looks as if it's going to go on. And this was like this was decided at the county board meeting. The clubs decided this, uh, and uh, you know the, they passed it and they looked for it. It was unanimously passed. No one objected to it on the night. Uh, so uh, you know it's going to. Be, it's going to from a for a punter for the punters. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, there'll be a lot at stake, and you really want to know who's gone down to the last day. And we could be going around the last day with our calculators in our pockets, trying to work out, you know, where it's going to be. We saw in the championship this year the qualification from the different groups. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of it was decided on score difference or on the results of head to, head to head. You know, it was that close. So. Um, that these teams are going to fight on their back. No, no one wants to go down. Uh, you know, and it's a tough place to be. Uh, situation. So I expect two fully committed games this weekend. Uh, and um, I expect them to get, if it is possible, maybe a cut my order, but I expect them to get more committed, if you like, or uh, there'll be a lot more at stake as they go on. But uh, that's the format that was decided by the clubs. Uh, and that's the position that's there now, and that's what's going to determine who will go down, two going down, and there's only one coming up next year. So, uh, obviously, whatever tool, only one of those could, can get up next year, and uh, it may be none of them. That obviously, there could be other teams and the pass them out. So, nobody, that for that reason alone, nobody will want to go down. They'll want to hold on to their status now. And... Uh... Lastly, before I finish up, uh, maybe for 30 seconds, Nicholas, your own thoughts in this format, a, a format where a relegation could be decided maybe on the same week, uh, same weekend as a senior club hurling county final. Is that a bit stretching it out yeah. a bit too far in terms of the calendar? For, for me, it's stretching it out too far. Uh, for the simple reason is you're relegated based on how you play in the championship. But this seems to be a separate competition altogether. You know, so I, 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 you know, it seems to be like a whole new group competition again. Like, uh, you know, surely you get relegated on how you performed in the championship, and it goes down into, you know, maybe one or two games. But having a whole series of games like that, I, I, I to decide. You know, sometimes these things are done at county board meetings, and and, and then it gets on that paying attention, and then after they're just wanting to get out of there, and it's thrown in there by by it was thrown in by white kids. Obviously, they had a reason. The reason for it because they were involved in a number of playoffs themselves, I suppose they understood the ins and outs of it. And maybe, maybe, maybe it's harsh to, to maybe it gives everybody a fair chance now. But having a separate competition, I think, is, is a bit of a stretch anyway. You know, but whoever whoever goes down, whoever goes down eventually, I mean, look how poor are Clare feeling this year. It's 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 a it's, it's, uh, it's a tough one if you go down from senior to intermediate. You're joining already. We know how good the teams are down there. So it's going to be uh, it, 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 it's going to be held for leather again, as it's right, as Seamus has said. Okay, so folks, that concludes this week's episode of RCB Radio Sports Show, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.ie. I would like to thank our guests, uh, Nicholas Rin and Seamus Hayes. We wish all the clubs participating in the quarterfinals of the senior, the semi-finals of the intermediate as well. All the best to look uh, this weekend. And uh, let's hope uh, Hurling is the big winner. But for me, uh, Jim Collins saying God bless, uh, good evening, good night, and uh, keep listening to the RCB Radio Sports Show. Take care.